All right, let's see if we can get some perch here. Sunset, sunrise, always a good time to get these little suckers to bite. Sun's going down, boom, got him. I got some cud bait making a slow drifter across here. Light wind, pow, got one. High low rig and pieces of cut bait on it. Little sinker on the bottom. Those are number six, octopus hook. I like the octopus hooks. This is a uh, precision cast crappie rod from Catch the Fever and a Runcel Titan 2. Been unreal. I think that's a 2000 series. So, boom, got them. Don't know why these things, they get fired up right at sunrise, right at dark. You can catch them during the day too. I caught some today, but man, when uh, when they're reluctant to bite this time of day, sun going down is the time to get on them. They're kind of scattered on the screen. I ain't got a wad of them out here. I seen some birds around here. I'm drifting for catfish through here. I was hoping, like there he got him, picked it up off the bottom. I was hoping, since I seen birds, I knew there'd probably be some perch around. And a lot of times you find these perch adjacent to where these perch are, you will find catfish, especially blue cats. Part of it is they're eating the perch. Part of it is they're eating stuff that the perch are eating. So I like those areas where I can get on them and catch them sometimes of the year. Ooh, felt him, there we go. One thing I like about this precision cast, this rod's designed for crappie fishing. But when they're biting a little reluctantly, it can help to get them. Again, white perch. That is not a white bass that some of y'all have in other parts of the country. They look similar, man. They look very similar. Almost look like a little striper. They're striper family. They're a saltwater fish, and they become landlocked into some of these lakes and reservoirs, and they spread. They are, uh, they're like cockroaches, man. They, uh, you can't get rid of them, and they're everywhere. And they also compete with, uh, you know, crappie for food and bass and everything else. So a lot of people don't like them. I kind of like them because they're good catfish bait. Boom. And they're fun to catch, as you can see. It's, uh, you watch a video like this, you see me catch them. You may see me catch two at a time. And you go, man, them things is easy to catch. And they are, as the late Captain Gus said on Lake Norman, they're easy to catch. They're just hard to find. <laughs> so the trick is finding them. And honestly, you can ride across them all day, some days, seeing them, marking them on sonar once you kind of know what they look like and they won't bite. And then they hit a window, like right now, in the evening, sun's going down, and they start biting. Now, middle of the day, they'll do it too. You don't know how many times it's been out here fishing, and uh, middle of the day, you'll see birds blowing up. They'll start feeding on some threadfin shad. They love to eat these little bitty threadfin shad. And uh, man, they'll blow up in the middle of the day. The only thing about that is, usually it's like a feeding frenzy, and then they're gone, they're done. So, uh, Usually this time of the day, you can get on to them. Okay, drop that baby down. All I'm doing, dropping it to the bottom, let it hit bottom. Sometimes they'll hit it as soon as it hits bottom. Sometimes you gotta give it just a little bit of jig and action. Sometimes you gotta do like that and give it a big lift and let it hit. And it all depends what excites them. Sometimes they don't want you moving the bait. Sometimes it has to be in the rod holder, you know, being dragged. Sometimes I'll pop it like that. It's kind of like skipjack, you guys that fish for skipjack. Some days it's a crazy fast erratic retrieve. Some days it's kind of jerky. Uh, you know, you just kind of have to figure out what's working. It's nice when you can drop them in and boom, boom, get on them and figure it out. Some days it's like you have to beat your head in. Now, I've got cut bait on here. You know, that's a, oh, a feeling, feeling, got him. Uh, oh, popped off. Cut bait's great. That's what's on here now. It's just pieces of white perch, actually. They eat their own. Minnows are great. Uh, minnows are the way to make them bite. I say make them bite. They're gonna hit minnows before they hit anything. But the uh, cut bait, the nice thing about cut baits, you can put it on there and leave it alone and it's hard for them to tear it off the hook. The skin, I hook it through the skin and uh, it's hard for them to get that stuff off the hook. So it stays on. You can use jigs too. If you wanna get ahead with some crappy jigs, if you like you know, doing a little finesse fishing with it, you can catch them that way too. Boom, you that rod tip moving, got it. Ah, pow, pow. And what's cool is, a lot of times, if you can get one fired up and feeding, the other ones will flock in to see what's going on. 
Uh, sometimes they get ganged up in schools, and it's big schools, and they'll hit it when the bait's falling. Uh, you know, other times like this, I'm looking over here on the screen, they're kind of scattered out. They're just in here across the bottom over a pretty big area. So, boom, there he is. Oh, he popped off. Let's sit, boom, he hit it again. <laughs> Sometimes you can do that. You can pull it halfway up and uh, they'll hit it again on the way up. So, it's a fun, fun fish to catch, man. Fun fish to catch. And you can eat them. They're good to eat. Uh, these are probably a little bit on the small side. They get bigger. I think our state record's right around two pounds. One of my former tournament partners and fishing mentor, Roger Taylor, caught it actually in this lake. State record for South Carolina, around two pounds. And most of them are gonna be this size. I mean, they're gonna be in that size range, but we've got three quarter to one pounders. They're big. Um, you catch one that's a pound and a quarter, you'll think you have a two pound fish. Uh, they're big, they're big. Once they get to that like one and a half, one and three quarter, man, they're like footballs. They just got a big old football shaped body. They are, they're really, really big. I like when I find them like this. Part of the reason I keep, you know, one of these bait rods in the water when I'm drifting is boom, got him. Uh, if I find these things, generally I find some catfish. I'm hoping a rod goes off here to prove me correct, but uh, it hadn't happened yet. I think our catfish bite today is really, really slow. So uh, the other thing is these little babies are a great way to pass the time while you're trying to catch something else. Uh, I've had people on guide trips uh, while we're drifting for catfish uh, that just, you know, they just like, give me one of them poles. I'll catch them things all day long. And they're fun. They're fun. Uh, especially when it's like this. I mean, it's just one after another. When they get really fired up and the bait comes off the hook, uh, they'll hit the bear hooks. I mean, it, they're that, that voracious when it comes to eating. But this is braided line. It's Andy braid. I, I've got some of my rods over here that also have uh, monofilament on it. Uh, yeah, I've got some of the slime line from uh, Catch the Fever, and I use that, and, but I like the braid. You can really, really feel the bite with it, especially when they're getting kind of subtle, subtle little pop-pop bites. Man, we're getting a bunch of them. We, they are on fire. It's amazing, guys. You look at this video and you're thinking, oh man, this is, this is it's just a zone of me. Killing them, it's like this all the time. I fished for a long time today, several hours out here dragging for catfish. I had the rods in the water, went across what looked like perch on the screen, and they would not bite. Here, the sun starts getting down like it is, that lower part of the sky. They're on. I mean, they're on. It's, it's today's perfect conditions, bluebird skies. Uh, ooh, deuces. We got deuces that time. I told you, you can get two of them sometimes on here. And when they're really schooled up, you'll have more of them chasing the sinker up to the top. So this is on, this is, you know, this is as good as it gets right here. I mean, uh, some people use sabiki rigs. Sabiki rig is like a multi-hook, usually four to six hooks on it. Uh, it's got like a little mylar fly on it. Uh, they're used to catch bait in salt water. You can use those. Uh, the problem with those is, um, you try to get five or six of them on there, they'll tangle those things up, especially if you're out here trying to drag around multiple rods. You need to uh, keep an eye on them because you will twist one up into a mess. But yeah, you can, with the sabikis, you can have five or six on at a time using those things. I see they're getting very subtle with the bite here. Boom, got him anyway. There we go. Sometimes they'll just come up and pop, 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 pop. Part of the trick to catch two of them at a time. See, that one's already lost a bait on it. So you can see how many fish I caught with that one, one bait or with those two baits on there. I'm gonna cut a piece off here. Like I said, it's just a piece of perch filet. I usually take it off the tail section. It is a little bitty piece. Just that big is all I got on there. Put that sucker on there that boom all oh, these to it man hopefully i didn't make them wait too long they might have got mad and left let's see there how's that screen looking oh yeah they're all on the bottom now good lines kind of looks like spaghetti uh almost like what you get when uh your waters that have stripers and it's just a matter of enticing a bite giving them the right bit of action 
Boom, he bit. There we go. There we go. Hooking him up. Boom. Chaga laga. Has anybody kept count? I didn't, I ain't even keeping count on how many we're catching. This is as good a perch bite as you will see uh, outside of dropping sabiki rigs and catching them six at a time. This many fish biting is pretty good. Pretty good. Boom, boom, he's hooked. <laughs> Trying to turn around to look at the boat position. Boom, there we go. There's a better one there. It's a better size one. Getting a little more of that uh, hybrid bass look to that body shape there. See how they start to get a little more football shape, a little less elongated. Dude, any time of the year, you can catch these things. Uh, these are not a, you know, here it's fall when I'm catching these things. Our water temperature is 58 to 60 right now. Primo temperature for them. Like I said, they're saltwater fish, so they're used to colder temperatures. And boom, got him. Uh, you can catch them year round with this intensity. I will say this, there are times in the spring, right before they spawn, they kind of have the same spawning rotation as a striped bass. You'll be on fire, you'll catch them, you will just, you know, lay the stick to them like we're doing today. And then when they spawn, it's like they've left the lake. It, it, it literally is like, man, where did the fish go? I can't catch one to save my life. I think it has to do with their what they would naturally be doing in the wild, would be making these runs up these rivers and spawning and then heading back to the ocean. I think they head back downstream in these lakes, thinking they're going to the ocean, hit the dam, and are kind of like, well, we can't go any further, and then redistribute. So there's like this phase where right there around the spawn, it's like, man, they're just impossible to catch. But this here kind of action, this will happen all winter long. Like I said, a lot of times it's late in the day uh you know first thing in the morning generally is when it's better and uh you know these things will also show up schooling with uh white bass uh, we don't have white bass in here very few of them anyway but some of the lakes that do have them these things will show up with them if they're in there uh, and also juvenile stripers uh, some of the small stripers in lakes that the fingerlings that have been stocked are the ones that are maybe one two years old these things will show up schooling with them and it's cool uh the bigger ones will blow up on top uh you can catch them on points and stuff especially you know days like this in the evening and you know especially in the morning fun fish fun fish to catch uh it's a good fish i think to teach kids how to feel a bite and you know feel what you know a biting fish feels like versus just catching them underneath the bobber um, it's like with this braided line and this 2000 series reels here, you can feel it really, really good. And that's the thing about this rod too, this, uh, from Catch the Fever, this uh, crappie fishing rod. It's a precision cast is what it's called. The way it's built, it, it's designed to feel a bite. A crappie bite's a lot more subtle and uh, can be anyway. And uh, a lot of times you got to really feel that, that thump, thump and you know this here really telecasts it through, through these and man you can you can figure out that bite get a feel for it figure out the jigging action have a little patience and good lord willing you get a school of them a bunch of them feeding in the evening man it's it's fun 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 fishing